Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, check this out. We are going to be testing out the stainless steel spear staff as well as some of the other new weapons we just added to the KarateMart.com website. But before we begin, if you could just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. So last week, I had so much fun making our video. I actually had Amanda go back to the warehouse and find some of the cheesiest Maul Ninja weapons she could possibly find for me to review. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what Maul Ninja weapons are, those are the type of fantasy weapons that you often find at the mall that are clearly more of a wall hanger than a legitimate weapon. But I got to review them and I got to test out their durability to see how easily I could break them. And then I asked you to go to the community tab and vote in two different polls. The first poll was which is the cheesiest mall ninja weapon that I showed off. And you guys went and voted for the Alien Fantasy Axe. Such a good choice. This was absolutely my choice for cheesiest mall ninja weapon. I mean, look at it. All you have to do is look at it to realize how Maul Ninja this is. And if you watched my video, you saw that it didn't hold up very well to the abuse that I gave it. But then I also asked you to go to the community tab and vote for which Maul Ninja weapon was your favorite. And you guys went to the community tab and voted for the Hooked Badlands Sword. Which is funny because this was actually my choice as well for my favorite Maul Ninja weapon because it did hold up better than all the other Maul Ninja weapons. So again, an excellent choice. So this week we're going to try something a little bit different. So back in the day we used to record a lot of our videos back in the warehouse and it was a lot of fun and some of you mentioned that you'd like to see the warehouse again. So I asked Amanda to leave a bunch of the newer weapons back there for us to review. So she's going to lead me around back there and we're going to find the weapons that I'm supposed to review today. So let's go take a trip into the warehouse and just see what she's got for us. Alright, let's go find your first weapon. This is fun. I haven't been in the warehouse with you guys in a while, so it'll be fun to see what's actually changed back here a little bit. All right, Amanda, where is your first weapon? Go to the left. Okay. All right, which room are we going to? We are going to the weapons room. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> and it'll be on your left. Okay. And then bottom of the first shelf. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. All right, what do we have here? Nice. Okay, so our first weapon is the Black Ops Tactical Knife. Ooh, good choice, Amanda. I like this. So first off, check out that Kydex sheath. That is really a nice Kydex sheath. And then it's got one of these belt clips on it that I just love. I love this style because it's the type that has a little button here. You open it up, attach it to your belt, close it, and then it actually has a lock on it. So I love that type. I think it's awesome. But you guys want to see the knife itself, and so do I. So let's check this out. Look at that. That is a stunning looking blade. Um, so the things I noticed first off is look at the contrast between the black finish on the blade and then the steel around the blade itself. I just love that. That is so cool looking. And then the handle is really comfortable. This is definitely a G10 handle. Feels really good in my hands. And then I've got this jimping up top that gives me really good control of the blade of the knife. And then check out the blade shape on this thing. It's a Tonto blade, but it's more of like a modified Tonto blade where we've got this little tip thing up here. And I love that because that's gonna be so good for stabbing or slicing. I love that, I think it's so good. And the blade itself is super sharp. I mean, this is a really sharp blade. So that is awesome. Um, the thing that I don't really like about this, first off, is listen to that. So when I choose a knife, I generally like a stealthy knife. So I'm not a huge fan of this D-guard here. So it's called a D-guard because look at how it's kind of formed into the shape of a D. You've got the handle and then it's a D there. And generally I like D-guards, but I'm not very fond of this specific one because I don't like this whole paracord thing. I don't think it does anything to really protect your hand. And then it's got these little links here that kind of connect into the knife. So the cool thing about this is we can actually remove it. We just have to unscrew these little links here and then I can just take that off 
And why that's cool is because if I needed this for survival purposes, this would be an awesome little aspect to the knife. So I guess the best thing to think to yourself is if you're going to use this for a survival knife, leave this on. If you're, if you're going to use it for a tactical knife, take it off because I want that off so this will be as stealthy and quiet as humanly possible. So let's see, we also have this really nice lanyard hole on the pommel, and that pommel is actually really heavy duty. I think we could use that pommel really nicely for non-lethal defensive purposes. I could use that for hammer strikes. I could use that for all sorts of strikes. So I really like that about it. But let's look at the blade itself. So the blade itself is made from an 8CR13 MOV steel. So I actually really like 8CR13 MOV steel because it's a fairly hard steel that has a good edge retention and wear resistance and is actually very corrosion resistant. And if you do mess up your edge, it's actually super easy to sharpen as well. So I think it's an excellent steel. And then we can also see that it's got this false edge on top, which I love false edges. I think they give it a good aesthetic appeal, but then also I actually like to sharpen them up. But if you ever do that, definitely check your local laws because there are some really strict laws against that. And then we can also see that there's venting in the blade here. Now that gives it a nice aesthetic look, but this is also a fairly heavy knife too. So that actually takes off a little bit of weight off of this knife. And we can see that it is full tang going all the way through the handle. So this knife is gonna hold up for you very, very nicely. I would just personally take off this D guard here if I was gonna buy it for myself. So the overall length is approximately 12 and a half inches. The blade length is approximately seven inches and it weighs approximately 15 ounces. So I love the weight of this knife. But that's about all there is to say about this. So let's go ahead and put this away and let's move on to our next weapon. All right, Amanda, where are we walking to next? All right, you're going to go to the right. Okay, all right. And then we're going to the stun gun room. The stun gun. <laughs> the stun gun room. At okay. the very top I to your right. Yep. I already see it. All right, so what do we have here? And our next weapon is the mini anti-grab stun baton. Why, Amanda? Why? <laughs> because <laughs> it's right. awesome yeah so we already carry a couple of anti-grab stun guns and they're so cool because they actually make it very difficult for an attacker to take your weapon away from you so let's just look at this so we can see that it has these anti-grab strips on here so if your attacker actually tries to grab the shaft of your stun gun that's gonna shock the heck out of him so I don't know if you saw that video in the past where I actually tried to grab oh, gee, the stun gun from Amanda, but it hurt so bad because we've got all of these little nerves in our hands and it hurts worse getting shocked in the hand than it does actually in the arm. So today, I'm not going to allow Amanda to do that to me. I'm going to have <laughs> Amanda shock me in the arm. I'm not going to grab this thing because that was just too painful for me. But let's take a look at what this thing comes with. So first off, we can see that it comes with this really nice nylon sheath. It'll kind of sit on the side of your body. So that's pretty nice. And one of the things I really like about this stun baton is that it's smaller. A lot of the stun batons we carry are so bulky that they hang down to here. And you know, there's a lot of women that want to actually put these in their purse. So this one would actually fit in a purse really nicely. So I like that about it. Um, we can see that it's made out of an ABS. A lot of the stun batons we carry are made out of a metal, some sort of aluminum or steel. This is definitely ABS, but it's got a really nice rubberized grip to it. But because it's ABS, it's not gonna be as durable as a steel or an aluminum stun baton. So I wouldn't be using this for striking. That would not be the purpose of it. The purpose of this being a stun baton would be to give you a little more reach between you and your attacker. So I like that about it. I think it's pretty nice. And this thing is light too. This only weighs about seven ounces. So that is super light. So if you're gonna keep it on the side of your body, it's gonna be really nice and comfortable for you. Now, another thing I noticed about it is it's actually got this wrist strap on it. And it's a type of wrist strap that actually has a disable pin for it. So I'm gonna put in that disable pin there. And that actually engages the stun baton. So now it's actually gonna work. So if you have this on your wrist and your attacker tries to grab it from you and they don't get stunned enough by this little stun strip, 
and they take it away, all of a sudden this thing's disabled, so they're not gonna be able to use it against you. So I love the fact that it has this disable pin on it. I think that's such a good feature. But I'm gonna plug that in right now. Let's test this thing out a little bit. So first off, we can see that it has this on off switch on here. So it's currently on off. If we turn it up one, all of a sudden we've got an LED flashlight. So that's nice. And then if we kind of switch it back to off and turn it back to on, then we've got the strobe effect. We turn it one more time and then it's the bright LED flashlight. So I like the fact that it has three different light modes, bright, dull, and strobe. Strobe is really nice because that'll actually gather the attention of anyone around you. So, and then if we push the button all the way up, all of a sudden it's engaged as a stun gun. So I'm gonna push this button right here and I have a feeling it's gonna stun. Oh yeah, that's pretty loud. That's a pretty loud one. Um, and one thing you should probably know is when it is on flashlight mode, the stun's not gonna work. It only seems to work when it's all the way up in stun gun mode. So yeah, that's, that's pretty loud. Now the manufacturer doesn't state how many volts this stun gun is, which I actually really respect that. And that seems to be the new trend when it comes to stun batons because manufacturers used to just throw a random number on their stun batons to make it appear that it was stronger than other stun batons. So often you'd see on the packaging 500 million volts or 100 million volts, and that just doesn't make any sense. So I love the fact that the manufacturer didn't put any sort of voltage number on this stun baton. So the way we're gonna have to tell how strong it is is by how loud the crackle of the stun is. So let's just listen again. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is going to be very strong. So the other way we have to test it is I actually have Amanda shock me with all the stun guns we've carried. If you've watched my previous video, you've seen me get stunned by all of these. And I hate it, but I feel like that's a necessary part of knowing whether these are an effective weapon or not. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and pass this over to Amanda. I'm gonna have her stun me in the arm. I'm actually gonna hold on to here. So I don't, oh gosh, don't move too much. So here we go, oh, jeez! <laughs> oh, that hurts so bad. <laughs> ah, jeez, I hate that. So yeah, it's definitely an effective weapon. She just did it for a split second and it hurt really, really bad. It feels like someone kind of punched you in the arm and then grabbed your skin and just stretched it. So it's like a nails digging into your skin plus a punch at the same time. It's definitely painful. So I can't imagine what it would hurt like to get stunned for like three or four seconds. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this away and let's go find your next weapon, Amanda. All okay. right, which way are we going? To the right. Okay. See if it's... Oh yeah, it's getting red, <laughs> nice and red. <laughs> All right, where are we heading? It is the right-hand side bottom shelf. For okay, school. here we go. All right, and the next weapon Amanda has for us is the Full Tang Nada Machete. Ooh, I like Nadas. I think they're so cool. And look at that. That is really nice. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Nadas, um, they're actually a Japanese tool that's been around for hundreds of years that's used for pruning trees, chopping through brush, but they're actually a really good weapon at the same time. So I like them. I think they're pretty cool. This one's a little different though. So first off, we can see that it comes with this black nylon sheath and it's kind of heavy duty, not overly heavy duty. I like the fact that it's got this nice belt loop in it. It's actually a pretty heavy duty belt loop. So that's not going to go anywhere if it's on the side of your body, but I'm not a big fan of the shoulder strap. It definitely looks a little lacking. I don't like how strong that looks, and I don't think it's long enough to actually fit on my shoulder very well. So that's one thing I don't like about it. Um, but let's look at the blade itself, because that's what's really important here. So the blade is clearly full tang. So I like that about it, and that's a pretty thick piece of steel. This is actually made from a 3CR13 steel, which has some good things about it and some bad things about it. Um, it is a stainless steel, so it's gonna be very corrosion resistant, so I like that about it. It's not very good with edge retention though, but the nice thing about 3CR13 stainless steel is that it is really easy to sharpen. So I like that about it. And when you're, you're using a weapon like this, it's actually gonna be used outdoors. It's nice that it's gonna be corrosion resistant. And then it's also nice that if you're chopping away, it's gonna be super easy to sharpen. So I actually think that this, the steel that they used on this is gonna be a pretty good steel for this type of weapon. Now, we can see that the handle is one of these kind of nylon cord wrapped handles. 
I generally don't like that very much. It's not my favorite, but this one's actually fairly comfortable. It's bulky enough that it fits nicely in my hand. I have good control of this. I like that. And then we've got this choil here that's interesting to me too. So when we see a choil on a weapon, typically you'll see them on knives. Um, they're nice because you can kind of put your finger in there. You get a little bit more control of the weapon. Um, let's say we're whittling something. They're nice in that respect. We can kind of use that choil just for a little bit more uh, control of the weapon. Um, also, if we're skinning an animal, you get a little bit more control. So that's kind of nice. Now on a machete, I'm not a huge fan of a choil here. I mean, if you're gonna chop, I definitely wouldn't want my finger in there. You could you could get yourself injured pretty easily. Um, your finger could also slide up onto the blade. I don't like that very much about it. So if I was gonna use this for chopping, I'd keep my hand right here on the handle and I'd chop with it. Now, if I was going to, uh, let's say, clear the bark off of a branch, that would make sense to put my finger in that choil. Um, also, when you're sharpening, it's nice because you can sharpen this edge and not worry about hitting this area. It just sharpens really nicely up to the choil. So often you'll see manufacturers put a choil on their blade just to make it easier for sharpening purposes. So that's kind of neat. Um, we can also see that there's this hole here towards the top of the blade. Now, generally you'll see those there so that you can hang this up. And that's kind of nice too, like if we if we have an area where we have farming utensils or something, we could just hang that on the wall right there. So kind of like that. The blade shape is what makes this not interesting to me though. If we look at it, it's got this flat end here. And that's so good because it gets such a sharp point right here on the tip. So if we're slicing through something, that's going to slice through just beautifully. So I love that about it. And the blade is super sharp. That's actually a really sharp blade. Love that. Um, we can also see that there's a lanyard hole at the end of the pommel right there. So that's nice if we wanted to add a wrist strap. Um, or we could just loosen some of this up and turn it into a wrist strap. So that wouldn't be bad also. So the overall length is approximately 20 inches. The blade length is approximately 14 inches, and that's all the way up to the choil there. And then the weight is approximately one pound, 2.6 ounces. This is a really nice weight for a Nada. I really like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this away, and let's move on to your next weapon. So which way are we heading, Amanda? We're gonna go straight, straight and then way. to the right. Okay. All right, are you thinking this way to the right? Uh, yes, that'd okay, be correct. Cool. All right. And then the second oh, or the third. Go. Yep. I see your paper. Perfect. Okay. Oh, wow. It looks like we've got two of them. Okay, so it looks like our next weapons are the extra large black throwing knives and the extra large silver throwing knives. I love these. I love large throwing knives like this. Um, I did a video probably about six months ago where I kind of showed how I like to throw throwing knives. So if you didn't get a chance, go back and watch that video because it actually turned out pretty good. Um, but the nice thing about large throwing knives like this is that they're really easy to stick. I find that when you buy the small throwing knives, the ones that are like two ounces or less, the problem is that you'll throw them and they're so light that they'll kind of bounce off the wall and bounce back at you. So the nice thing about the large ones is they'll just stick so much easier. So I love that about them. Let's go ahead and look at the black ones first. So first off, it comes with this really nice heavy duty nylon sheath and it has a belt loop on there so we can just hang it from the side of our body if we want. So that's pretty neat. But let's look at the knives themselves. Oh yeah, yeah, I love these. I love broadhead throwing knives. They just seem to stick so nicely. So I love this style with this big, thick broadhead. Beautiful. And let's check the balance on these things. That's an awesome balance. And the way they get that balance so well is they do the venting in the handle of the knife just perfectly so it gives it just the right amount of balance between the blade and the handle. So that is absolutely perfect. When we go to throw these, you'll see they just stick beautifully. So this actually weighs approximately 7.5 ounces. That is the perfect weight for a throwing knife. Now the blade is made from a 1065 German surgical steel which I've been seeing that a fair amount lately on the different throwing weapons that we carry. And I really like this steel. I think it's a really good steel. I've actually tested it out a ton and have had really good results with it. And then this one specifically has this nice black finish on it too. So that's gonna make it more corrosion resistant in itself. 
So we can see that these come three to a pack, which is really nice because if you've thrown throwing knives before, you know that they often get lost. Um, and that's one of the things I really like about silver throwing knives. So I'm gonna put the black one away and look at the silver ones really quick. Yeah, look at that. So if you're throwing these in the woods, that's just gonna kind of shine when the sun hits it. So that's gonna be really easy to find. So I love that about the silver throwing knives. Now there's a bunch of different ways to throw these things. And all you have to do is a simple search on YouTube to find a bunch of excellent knife throwers on there that can teach you how to do it. Um, there's rotational methods, there's a no spin method, there's a half spin method. So you can go back and watch my previous video if you wanna learn more about how I like to throw them. But these are actually approximately 12 inches long, which is a perfect length for a throwing knife. But there's not much more to say about this, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this away. And let's move on to our next weapon. So where are we heading, Amanda? We're going to go to the bow staffs in the front. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. All right, let's do it. The nice thing is I think all the employees are gone for the night, so we should be good. All right. So this is a new shipment of rattan stabs that we just got. And these are like authentic rattan. So I love this kind of stuff. Like, look at this. This has like a bear paw design burnt into the rattan. That is beautiful. Now, all of these are only available on combative.com. So if you're looking for a really good rattan bow staff, go to combative.com and you'll find some really cool stuff on there. But why are we over here? Oh, here we go. All right, so our last weapon of the day is the stainless steel spear staff. I love this thing. I think this is so neat. I actually designed it with Combative and I, it, it just turned out beautifully. We actually originally designed it in aluminum uh, because we wanted it to be lighter, but we found that the tip would kind of ding up a little bit. So we chose to switch it up for stainless steel and I am so excited with the results of this. First off, it's not that heavy. This one is actually a five foot staff and it only weighs three pounds, 13 ounces. Now, generally a bow staff is going to weigh roughly about maybe two and a half pounds for a five foot staff, but this feels good. This actually feels really nice in my hands. I would have good control doing my tricks with this. I'd have good control with this as a weapon. And I love how solid it looks. So this is actually made from a stainless steel tube. So it is hollow, but it's got a very thick wall. So that is a high strength stainless steel, but we chose to use a tube that was hollow so that we could keep the weight down a little bit. Now the tips on the end are a solid stainless steel. So it's solid all the way from here up. And you cannot see that transition line at all. You will never be able to tell that it actually transitioned from hollow into solid because they did such a good job hand machining this. So I love hand machine weapons. They're all gonna look just slightly different from each other just because it is hand done but this is really good quality workmanship. So I think this is so great. Feels so nice in my hand. I mean, look at those grip lines on there. That's so comfortable. The placement for them is absolutely perfect. We also design grip lines up here. So if you're doing your forms where the staff comes out in a long range, you can grab up there too. So I love that about it. And these tips are super sharp and they're actually really durable. Now, I just want to give a little disclaimer with this. If you're gonna go out on a concrete floor and start spinning this around and it falls, you're gonna ding up the tip. But the same thing would happen if you took a knife blade and dinged it into a concrete floor as well. But let's actually test this out a little bit and see how strong these tips are because I know these things are strong because I tested the heck out of it. So Amanda, I'm gonna have you follow me a little bit and let's just test this out really quick just to see how strong this is. So we'll go back in the Bay Area because I know I've got some pellets back there and some other things that we can strike. Let's go back there really quick. Okay, here we go, here we go. So we've got all these pellets right here. And this is really hard wood right here too. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this tip and hit it hard against this wood. Oh yeah, that, that's a really solid piece right there. So let's just hit this hard. Okay, so it just broke through that wood. If you look at the tip, it is not bent at all. Let's put it in here again. This one's another hard piece. Look at that, left that huge hole right there. 
Tip is not damaged at all, still in great shape. Broke through that, broke through that. No damage to the tip at all. So they're gonna last really, really nicely. So you're not gonna have to worry about those tips getting dinged up at all. But I know what you're thinking. This area of the staff is the more hollow portion of it, but that is a very thick wall of stainless steel. So we're gonna test that out too really quick. So Amanda, why don't you follow me out here? I see a tree over here, and I hope you guys don't get mad at me hitting a tree with this thing, but I feel like it's not gonna hurt the tree, but it might hurt the staff. So let's just test it out a little bit. All right, so I'm just gonna whack it against this, and this is, Oh yeah, that is a hard palm tree right there. So yeah, let's just give it a whirl. Perfect, no bend to it, no damage. The nice thing is too, like if you ever did scratch up the stainless steel, you could just grab some steel wool, clean it right up and it'd be good as new. So I love this thing. I think it is such a cool weapon. So make sure you guys go to the community tab and vote for which weapon you like best this week. I have a feeling this is gonna be the big winner. But if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel and check out KarateMart.com because we've got all sorts of awesome weapons on there right now. But until next week, we'll see you Weapons Wednesday.